as a child of God, do you know that the Lord loves you? Do you know that God loves you and that you can never lose the Lord's love no matter what you or what others may think? Something that I have noticed in my life and in the life of others who genuinely believe in the Lord is how we often let guilt get the better of us. All right. All right. Guilt can put some bad thoughts into our head, can it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guilt can burden us and even cause us to be depressed in our soul. All right. Now, what I mean by this is that sometimes we can feel guilty for things that we may have said. We can be guilty for things that we may have thought about. Mm -hmm. We can feel guilty even about the things certainly that we have done. Mm -hmm. Uh, With a guilty conscience, we can begin to think to ourselves and we can begin to believe that the Lord no longer cares about us. All right. We can begin to believe that God no longer loves us. Mm -hmm. We begin to believe that our guilt even can block us from the Lord. You see, in our guilt, we can feel great shame and even great embarrassment, Mm -hmm. which can keep us from wanting, from desiring to go to God. In this state, I believe that all believers are at their most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With this frame of mind, we leave ourselves, I believe, wide open to attack from the burdens of life. We leave ourselves wide open to attack from ourselves. And we leave ourselves wide open to attack from our great adversary and his agents of wickedness as well. Mm -hmm. Throughout the history of the righteous, you will find that we are often antagonized by our own guilt. We are often antagonized by our own doubt. Mm -hmm. Guilt and doubt can be pushed on us by ourselves. Guilt and doubt can be pushed on us as well by our great adversary. Even worse, guilt and doubt can be pushed on us by an even greater enemy, which I have just mentioned to you, which is not the devil, but is you yourself. So what I want to do here today, what I want to focus on is I want to focus on our wrong and I want to focus on our guilt here in my message today. And at the very same time, I want to show you why you don't have to be weighed down by your guilt. I also want to show you that uh, by being weighed down by your guilt, you don't ever have to worry about whether the Lord loves you or not. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I want to drive home today here for you is the love of God. God's love is something that you often hear me focus on because it is of much important to us, Mm -hmm. especially as a child of God. You see, we care whether or not the Lord loves us. So that's why you hear me. That's why you see me focus on love so much. Mm -hmm. In our Sunday school lesson last week, we spoke about whether or not the Lord truly cares about us. Now, this thought, it may seem silly to those of us who are strong in the faith, but this thought is anything but silly to those who are of no to little faith. This is a subject that is of great importance to them. Something that I feel all people should know, whether they believe in the Lord or not, Mm -hmm. is that God truly does love and care about all people. Yes, sir. I want to share with you again a verse that you often hear me reference often from the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel. Mm -hmm. We see there in the 45th verse of that chapter of Matthew's gospel that Jesus said to the disciples, 
said that God makes his son rise on evil mm -hmm. and on the good, as you have heard me reference and say before. Mm -hmm. Jesus said there in that verse that God sends rain on both the just and on the unjust. Mm -hmm. All right. And as you have heard me say a time or two, the rising and the setting of the sun mm -hmm. and the falling of the rain, that is a blessing from the Lord right. because both bring life to us. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I tell you today that in that statement alone, we see that God truly does love all people. All right. But if that statement is not enough, we know that the Lord truly cares for all people through the very action that I believe defines God's love towards man. In another very familiar verse, we know that Jesus said that God so loved the world, which means all people, not some people, but all nations of people. He loved all people and he gave to all people his only begotten son. All right. All right. So to anyone who ever suggests or whoever thinks that God does not love all people, I would tell them today to think again, yeah. to think otherwise, because the Lord truly does love all people. If he did not love all people, he would not have gave all people his only begotten son. Now for the child of God, Scripture makes it very clear to us that while God certainly does love all people, we hold a very special place in the Lord's eyes. In the Gospels, we are told that whatever the child of God asks of the Lord, he will do, that we will receive, so that he, the Lord, may be glorified. Paul and James, they both wrote of God's love, stating that the Lord pours out his blessings mm -hmm. on us and he does so liberally. So God's love towards us is done unconditionally. Mm -hmm. It is done so it is shown liberally towards us. Mm -hmm. Lastly, of the Lord's love for his children, Christ told us that he is the good shepherd. Yeah. And we know that as the good shepherd, that Christ tends to his flock. Mm -hmm. Again, as David said in the 23rd Psalm, we know that God is our shepherd. And because the Lord is our shepherd, we don't want for anything because the Lord cares for us and he provides for us liberally. Yeah. Now, the question that we must answer today is whether or not we truly believe in what scripture has told us, mm -hmm. has shown us about the Lord's love towards us. All right. All right. Some of us have answered the question Mm -hmm. And we have said that we do believe what scripture has shown us. We do believe what scripture has said to us about God's love. Mm -hmm. We say that God loves us. And because he loves us, we have chosen to love him in return. Yeah. Yet the honest truth that we must admit here today mm -hmm. is that in our walk of faith, there are going to be several times where we question yeah. whether or not the Lord truly loves us. Mm -hmm. All right. For example, should we lose a job? Mm -hmm. Should we lose a house? All right. Should we lose a car or cars? Mm -hmm. Should we lose our clothes or should we lose a family member or should we lose friends? Should we even lose good health? All right. 
In other words, when things seem to go wrong or when things don't seem to go the right way as we desire for them to go, many of us, we will begin to wonder and we will begin to question if God still loves me. I don't know about any of you. I don't know if you've ever wondered that before. Maybe you are perfect. Maybe you have never thought that before, but I myself, yeah, yeah. I speak for myself here today, mm-hmm. not from what I have heard or from what I have seen in scripture about guilt, All right. mm-hmm. but what I have felt in my own heart today. Mm-hmm. You see, in our personal guilt, some of us may begin to believe that we have lost the Lord's love. Uh-huh. In this very thought and feeling, there begins to be questions about whether or not we have lost our salvation Mm -hmm. because of something that we may have thought, Mm -hmm. because of something that we may have said, but especially because of something that we may have done and we know that it was wrong for us to do it. All right, all right. Again, I want you to understand that I'm saying this from my very own personal experience mm-hmm. today. I have had moments where I have wondered myself if I did something to stir up God's anger oh. towards me. If I have done something that caused God to not love me. Mm-hmm. If I have done something to lose favor in the Lord's eyes. Right. I don't know if you've ever felt like that before, but if you have felt like that before, this is for you today. I feel like this is an honest feeling for us to have as genuine believers. Mm -hmm. To me, this actually shows that we are concerned about our standing in the Lord's eyes. To me, this actually shows that we care about God's love. Mm -hmm. To me, this shows that we care about God loving us and that we care about God's favor. It shows that we care about our salvation. Mm -hmm. It shows that we care about God's forgiveness. It shows that we care about the Lord's mercy. Our guilt shows us that we care. And that is of great importance. So is it possible for a child of God to lose God's love towards them? We must answer today. Will the Lord stop being ever faithful towards us because of something that we may have done? Can we lose our salvation because of something that we have done? Mm -hmm. Here in the 37th Psalm today, we will see David speaking to those who I believe were of no faith to little faith in the Lord. Now, someone may ask, well, how do you know that? How can you say that? If you look down to the 37th verse there in the 37th Psalm, you will see there that David said to mark and to observe the blameless that are those who are just. He said to mark and observe them and those that are upright. Meaning those who are righteous. Mm David, he also there, we will see, he begins to speak of the Lord's manner. He speaks of it in a manner that will teach them to lean on, to depend on, to trust in the Lord. Okay. He speaks of God's love in a manner that will help us today to be able to answer our questions. Mm -hmm. It helps us today to be able to grow in our faith. Again, as I said last Sunday, our goal is to be strong in our faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we will see here today will help us to reaffirm and to strengthen us in our faith, especially when we are feeling guilty about something that we may have done when we feel troubled in our hearts. In our key verse for today, we will see David state here. He states there, the steps of a good man, David said, are ordered by the Lord. 
the good person that David is speaking of, there is one who is righteous. Mm -hmm. And as we know, those that are considered to be righteous are those who the Lord calls righteous, mm -hmm. not those who self proclaim to be righteous. Mm -hmm. You see, we can only be righteous in God's eyes through our genuine faith in his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. As you have heard me say before, yeah, yeah. Proclaiming to be righteous is being self-righteous. God determines whether or not we are righteous. In other words, the Lord determines whether or not we truly are good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let us understand that David in essence here is again, touching on God's love towards us. Mm -hmm. He is touching on God's love towards those that are righteous those that are his, those that belong to him. All right, all right. And we'll see that David states to us that through his love, God is with those that are righteous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that is very important. All right. yeah. It is very important for you to know that God is with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, not only is God with us, mm -hmm. not only is God with those that are his, we will see that David tells us that the Lord orders their steps. Right. God orders the steps of those that are righteous. Mm -hmm. now, what this means is that God goes before them. God goes before those that are his and God guides them. Mm -hmm. God guides us who are righteous yeah. just as we saw him do for the children of Israel. When he guided them from Egypt to the promised land, mm -hmm. God is with you today. God is guiding you on your journey. Oh, yeah. Again, God is with you mm -hmm. in his own personal experience. We'll see in the 40th Psalm and the second verse, that David spoke of how the Lord brought him out of a horrible pit mm -hmm. and how the Lord set his feet upon a rock yeah. and how God established mm -hmm. his steps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Again, David was in a horrible pit, he said, but he tells us there that God was with him in that horrible pit yeah. in order to bring him out mm -hmm. of that horrible pit. Do you see that there? From David back to Joseph, mm -hmm. who was literally put in a pit and sold into slavery by his own brothers. Yeah, yeah. We saw again that God was with Joseph. Mm -hmm. God was with Joseph in that pit yeah. and God was with Joseph while he was even in bondage. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it could have been easy for Joseph to, to give up his hope, to lose hope in the Lord for being in that predicament. But Joseph's faith, it only grew stronger yeah. as the Lord proved to be with him mm -hmm. and bless him greatly in his steps. Again, Joseph was in a pit. He was in a terrible situation, but again, God was with him and God established, God ordered his steps. I tell you that God is with you today and God is ordering your steps today. As the Lord was with both Joseph and David, he is with all of us and he guides us. Guys, all of us who are righteous today, yeah, yeah. you see God, he dwells in our hearts. That again is our soul. Mm -hmm. And he dwells in our soul through the inner dwelling of his Holy Spirit. Again, God is the father. Again, God is the son. Again, God is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit, our every step is ordered. Our every step is led in all truth yeah, yeah. that is said according to Christ. So I hope you understand that no matter where you go on your journey on your pilgrimage through life, I hope you understand that the Holy spirit 
God is abiding with you, that God is, in other words, with you again, wherever it is that you go. Even when you fall into a pit of sin, I want you to understand that the Lord is there. When we fall into a pit of sin, I want you to understand that God is still with us. And what this means is that the Lord knows when we have fallen down. In other words, God knows when we have trespassed yeah. against him. Wow. Now, there are some who profess to be a follower of Christ who believe themselves to be perfect, mm -hmm. who believe themselves to be without sin. All right. <laughs> you see, they never fall off the narrow path. Come on, come on. They never seem to fall down in life. They, they are perfect. They, they never trespass against the Lord. That's according to them. That's what they would say. In his first epistle, John commented that those who say that they have no sin are deceiving themselves. And John said the truth is not in them. The truth, I tell you today that it must be in us. The truth must be in us today. And I believe that those who feel guilty over their wrongdoings, they have that truth in them through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. Those that have the truth in them are able to humbly acknowledge that they have done wrong mm -hmm. because they have listened to the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit tells us right from wrong and, and we have a choice whether we will do right or wrong. Yeah. And when we make that choice to do wrong, the Holy Spirit is telling us, you have done wrong, daughter. You have done wrong, son. You have done wrong. And we know it. Yeah. That is why we feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Because we have listened to the Holy Spirit's guidance. Mm -hmm. Something that I feel we have to be able to do as a child of God is we have to be able to humbly acknowledge that we aren't perfect, All right. All right. that we are capable of falling down. In other words, that we are capable of sinning, even though we are in fellowship with the Lord, we are still capable of error because, again, we aren't perfect. As I said a few Sundays ago in my sermon, there are two natures that are present inside of all genuine believers. Mm -hmm. Those two natures are a nature of worldliness. That is, again, a nature that is of the flesh and a nature that is of the spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of the righteous ones, which gives us a nature that is of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yet many of us can acknowledge and recognize that our own nature, which opposes the Lord, it is still ever present inside of us. Yeah, yeah. So immediately we know that our old man, our old person can creep up. Yeah, yeah. Immediately we have all had our moments where instead of following the spirit's lead, we go off and do our own thing. All right. <laughs> we will give in to our old nature. And again, this act we know is an act that does not please the Lord. And because we know that sin is not pleasing to the Lord, we are left, uh, often left feeling guilty. We are often left feeling guilty in our conscience. We have a conscience, which if we allow it, if we allow it with guilt, we will allow guilt to control us. Mm -hmm. In those moments when things don't seem to go our way, we can begin to feel, we can begin to think that the Lord has forsaken us all because of the guilt that is inside of us. Mm -hmm. Even worse, when it comes to dealing with the guilt of our conscience and dealing with the thought of whether or not the Lord loves us, there's old Satan the devil and his agents of wickedness mm -hmm. that love to seem to pop up in those moments right. that love to seem to go on the attack, trying to attack 
our thoughts, mm -hmm. trying to attack our emotions, mm -hmm. always seeking to drive a wedge between us and the Lord, playing on our guilty conscience, mm -hmm. saying to us that God don't love you anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. Trying to move us away from the Lord is what the devil and his agents of wickedness is trying to do. Yeah. This reminds me of Job mm -hmm. in his days of great pain. Job's so-called friends, they did not help Job. Mm -hmm. They came along the way and they tried to make Job believe that God had turned away from him all because he had done something wrong in their minds. That's what they thought. And I tell you again, the devil moves that way against us today. Mm -hmm. And there are people that are around you that will take these very same actions as Job's friends did to him. Again, trying to drive a wedge between you and the Lord trying to drive a wedge between you and God in your fellowship with him. Well. Again, it always seems that the righteous is being persuaded to doubt the Lord. Mm -hmm. It always seems like we are being persuaded to not believe, mm -hmm. to not have faith. In those moments where our guilt or where others are trying to make us think that God has turned away from us, because of something that we may have done or because of something that we did do. Mm -hmm. I want you to see what David said here in the 37th Psalm. All right. All right. Here in the second of our key verses for today, we'll see that David said, though he, the he there in that verse is a righteous person, mm -hmm says, though a righteous person fall, David said that he shall not be utterly cast down. All right. Let me repeat that one more time for you so that you can see that. I want you to underline. I want you to highlight this in your Bibles today. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want you to bury this verse here in your hearts today so that it is always with you in your heart. Mm -hmm. Again, David said there, though a righteous person fall, he shall not, David said there, not mm -hmm. be utterly cast down. And then David gives us the reason why the righteous will not be utterly cast down there in that verse. Mm -hmm. He said, for the Lord upholds, yeah, yeah. lifts up, mm -hmm. upholds him with his, that is God's hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep that verse with you, mm -hmm. not just today, but for the rest of your journey in this life. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you, David learned this from his own personal experience mm -hmm. that God will uphold those he loves, yeah, yeah. those that are righteous, mm -hmm. even when those he love may fall, mm -hmm. yeah. may trespass, mm -hmm. may sin against him. In his great sin, David prayed that the Lord have mercy on him. David said to God, create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. David said, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me, is what David said. You see, David, he felt guilty in his conscience because of his great sin. But David knew that God was with him. And in this conscience, David desired that God remained with him. Mm -hmm. And we see that David repented. Yeah, yeah. No. 
David did not want to lose God's love. All right. This is a thought that I believe all genuine believers have when we err and when we fall. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose God's love right. because we know how special it is for God to, to dwell in us, oh, yeah. for God to be with us wherever it is that we go. Mm -hmm. so, so when we err, when we sin, we go to God immediately in prayer, seeking his forgiveness, seeking his mercy, desiring that he does not leave us because right. we want God to be with us. I want you to remember that the Lord created in all of us a clean heart when he gave the world his only begotten son. When we chose to believe in his only begotten son, God created a clean heart within us. As we know, the Lord is both faithful and just to forgive us of our wrongdoing if we confess them yeah. to him. Oh, yeah. You see, the doors of the Lord are always open for us to go to him. Mm -hmm. And he desires for us to come to him. Mm -hmm. He desires for us to cast our cares upon him. All right. All right. To those that are of a guilty conscience, who see in his letter to the Ephesians mm -hmm. that Paul said that God is rich in mercy mm -hmm. said that the Lord is rich in mercy out of his great love for us. Right. Yeah, yeah. See, we should all understand that the love's the Lord's love and mercy towards us. It is not temporary. God's love, mercy, towards you, it is unending. Mm -hmm. God's love and mercy for you, it has no end. Mm -hmm. It will not ever cease. Mm -hmm. It will continue on from the day when you chose to love him. I don't know if you hear me here today. Mm -hmm. You see, God is rich in mercy towards you. Yeah. God's love for you, it is great. Mm -hmm. God, I want you to hear today, is not going to cast you away. Mm -hmm. God is not going to abandon you. Mm -hmm. God is going to show you mercy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is shown to us throughout scripture. And I believe this is also shown to us throughout our lives as well. For scripture's sake, when God sent the great flood during the days of Noah, the Lord could have ended it all right then and there. Yet God gave mankind another opportunity. In other words, God showed mankind mercy. God, he gave to the children of Israel his law to keep. And when the children of Israel failed to keep his law, God did not give up on them. All right. God did not abandon them. Mm -hmm. The Lord was again merciful towards them. Right. When the world was lost in a pit of sin, God again did not give up on the world, did he? Right. God, he gave to the world his only begotten son. God, again, he came to the world and he manifested himself in the flesh in this world. And he came with an offer of mercy. He came with an offer of salvation when he could have destroyed it all. God came with a second chance. An offer of forgiveness an offer of mercy and an offer of his greatest gift to man, yes, salvation. Mm -hmm. If the Lord did not give up on us when we were once lost in sin, mm -hmm. why would he ever give up on us when we have become righteous in mm -hmm. his eyes? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you hear that question there today. Mm -hmm. If God did not give up on us when we was a sinner, mm -hmm. why would he give up on us now when we are a child of his? Mm -hmm. 
when we have genuinely loved his only begotten son mm -hmm. and when we have genuinely believed in him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is never going to abandon you. Mm -hmm. God is never, never going to abandon the righteous. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. In the book of Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter and the eighth verse we see that Moses conveyed this same message to the children of Israel when he said, the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. Moses said, he will not leave you mm -hmm. nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. Moses said, do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Again, I say to you today that the Lord is with you. God is with you through good and bad in sickness and in health. Right. The Lord has no intentions of ever departing from you. Mm -hmm. God has no intentions of divorcing those that are his, those that are righteous. I don't know if you know where I'm going with that today. When God is in a relationship with you, he is not going to leave you by the wayside. I don't know if you hear it there today. Right. And God is with us over every hill and every mountain. Mm -hmm. And through every valley, God is with us. Yeah, yeah. God is with you because he loves you. Oh, yeah. Now, something that we should certainly understand about the Lord's love as a child of God is that we do not go without being disciplined by the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. God is going to discipline you. Mm -hmm. Solomon said to those that desire to be wise, those that desire to be righteous, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him for whom the Lord loves. He corrects. Mm -hmm. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. See, I certainly believe that there are times when we get down because of how God is correcting us. All right, all right. Sometimes we don't like how God is correcting us well. when we do trespass against him. Mm -hmm. Yet if the Lord did not care about us, if he had abandoned us, then he certainly would not give us the time of day to offer any sort of rebuke. Mm -hmm. He would not give us the time of day to offer any sort of correction. Mm -hmm. All right. The writer of Hebrews wrote and said to us, if you endure the chastening, God deals with you as with sons for what son is there whom a father does not chasten? They indeed for a few chastened us as seemed best to them, but he, our God, for our prophet, mm -hmm. that we may be partakers of his holiness. Mm -hmm. So when we do wrong, the Lord does not come close to abandoning us. Mm -hmm. He offers us correction. Mm -hmm. He rebukes us so that we can grow from our sins mm -hmm. so that we can be partakers of his holiness. You have no reason to ever feel guilty to the point to where it weighs you down to where you are questioning whether or not the Lord loves you. Mm -hmm. God certainly does love you. God will not just constantly tear you down because of the wrongs that you have done as mm -hmm. others would do. No, the Lord is going to lift you up. Yeah, yeah. I encourage you today to not let the weight of your wrongs, your guilts. I encourage you not to let those things weigh you down today. Mm -hmm. Do not let your guilt and don't let Satan and his agents of wickedness try to persuade you away from the Lord with the idea that God no longer loves you right. yeah. because of something that you may have done wrong. Well. Don't ever let that happen. Mm -hmm. We ought not be weighed down because the Lord is too busy lifting us up. 
over all that we have done that may have been a sin against him. I tell you today, be confident that the Lord is merciful and that the Lord is for a forgiving God who lifts us up that are righteous. Just as David said, the Lord upholds those that are his. To the children of Israel, we will see that Moses once said to them, other oh, Lord, Know that the Lord, your God, he is God, mm -hmm. the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations yeah. with those who love him and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand today that there is nothing that can break the Lord's love. There is nothing that can separate you from the Lord's love and his faithfulness that he has towards you who are righteous. You see, God is forever faithful to those that are righteous. Mm -hmm. To this day, everyone has an opportunity at God's salvation oh, yes. because the Lord's love towards us is unending. Mm -hmm. And because his love towards us is unending, that means that his salvation that we have received through his love and his mercy and through our faith it too is also unending as well. We will see here in his letter to the Ephesians, Paul wrote in the first chapter and the 13th verse in him, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Mm -hmm. You were sealed. Mm -hmm. There is no breaking the seal of God. Mm -hmm. God is not going to break his seal of promise mm -hmm. that he has made towards you. You're not going to be lost from the hands of the Lord when he has laid a hold on to you. I want to end today's message with this statement from Christ when he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one, Jesus said, is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. There is nobody, not you yourself, not the devil and his agents of wickedness. There is nobody that can take you away from the Lord. Don't let your guilt take you away from God. The Lord has already overcome your guilt. So you have no reason to be buried in your guilt when you can turn your guilt over to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.